Today on The Joy of Editing, I thought we'd get creative using Photoshop and the TK Gen Fill Panel to turn a photograph into a painterly image. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I want to take this flower image of mine and turn it into something a little more painterly. I really enjoy this image as a photograph, but I thought, well, let's try some different artistic styles on it using the TK Gen Fill panel and generative fill in Photoshop. By the way, the TK Gen Fill panel is absolutely free. If you don't have it yet, click on my affiliate link in the description right below this video. It'll take you over to the TK web store where you can pick up this panel for absolutely free. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, here's my TK Gen Fill panel. And you'll notice these buttons up here at the top. You see this button right here that says 1024. When you click on this button, it'll take any photograph that you have and make the longest side of that image 1024 pixels, which is the resolution that Photoshop's Gen Fill works in. And I find when you use that resolution, you're going to get the best results. And then what I do, it's going to be a small file when you're done. But then what you would need to do would be to upsize that at the end. You could upsize it in Photoshop, but I highly recommend using something like Topaz uh, Gigapixel AI or Topaz Photo AI to upsize that image. And you'll get really great results when you do that. Now, in case you're wondering what these buttons are for, if you click on any of these, these are aspect ratios that are based off of Adobe Firefly's image dimensions for generating AI images from Firefly. But we can generate images right here in Photoshop. This will give you a blank canvas. In other words, if I click this 4x3, we're going to get an aspect ratio of 4x3. And if I click my size button on my combo panel, you can see that this is 1408 pixels wide by 1024 pixels high, which again are the same dimensions that Adobe Firefly uses. I'm just going to click cancel here and I'll get rid of this because I don't really need this right now. But I thought you might be wondering what these buttons are for. So I'm going to click this 1024 button and watch the image when I do. Notice it got really small. Now I could do a command or control plus a couple times to make the image look larger. It's still those same dimensions though. We just see it larger on the uh, screen. And now I want you to also notice that the original file is still intact. So we don't mess with the original file whatsoever. We just duplicate the image and we make it smaller. So at this point I can just click the X right here and not save this. So this file is safe. Nothing's getting hurt here at all, so I'll just click Don't Save. But this is the 1024 image. Now you'll notice if I click on my Size button on my Combo Panel, you can see that this image is 1024 high by 734 pixels wide. I'll just click Cancel. But now we can start and have some fun. Now, what's really great about the TK Gen Fill Panel, one of the things that make it really great are these percentage buttons here. So you see this button right here, 15, that stands for 15%. So it will stay truer to the original image. If I want to turn this into, say, like an oil painting, so let me type in the prompt here, oil painting. Now that I have this prompt, I need to pick a percentage, and I like to start very low for something like this. So I like to start at like 15%. So I'll click on 15 and you'll notice you see a magenta overlay over the image. That's letting us know that it's selected at 15%. Now, if I choose 20%, you can see the magenta overlay is getting stronger. I could go the whole way up to 100%. Now you'll still see the image through here, but it's selected at 100%. But you can go here and change your mind and click on any one of these percentages you want. But again, I want 15%. And basically what 15% means is lower percentages will keep the image closer to what the original images look like. In other words, it will look like an oil painting because I typed in this prompt oil painting, but it'll resemble the original image a lot closer. When you go higher up in these numbers, the actual shape and form of this flower will really get altered, and it really depends on how Adobe Firefly interprets it at that point. Now, after you've typed in your prompt and you chose a percentage, all you need to do is click Generate. Now, it takes about 20 to 25 seconds, which I won't make you wait. I'll pause between each rendering. Okay, now here's my first result. Now, you'll notice here, you see here where it says 1, you're going to get 3 generations, so... 
This is my first generation, which looks pretty good, but you can see if I shut this off, it's pretty true to the original image, only it looks like a painting, right? But now let me go through these. So I'm going to click the right arrow. So here's the second result. Now that one's pretty interesting. Now here is my third result, but you notice they're very close to the original image. Now, if I want to, I can click generate again, which I think I will. Let me click generate again. All right, now I have three more results. So here's the first result. I'll click the right arrow. Here's the second result. And here is the third. And now you can see this is my properties panel and here are my six images. So right now, the third image is actually the third that I just generated. If I click this arrow again, it'll go back to this image and it'll keep ramping through. So watch, if I click this, it goes to this image and you can see, and now we can click to the right again. And here's that next image. Here's the next one. We can keep clicking through here till we find one that we kind of like. And I kind of like this one. Let me go to the last one. Now I can go backwards here as well, but let's say I like this one. Now I have all these images here. Now, if I want to just to save file space, there's this rasterize button right here. And say I don't like the other images, but I like this one. I could commit to that by clicking on rasterize and it'll dump all those other images off and save file space for me. And also you'll notice it tells me that I generated that at 15% and the prompt was oil painting. So that's really nice. The panel sets you up and labels all your layers for you and what values you've used. Now I can keep experimenting. So I can shut this layer off and my prompt is still here, oil painting. So now let's say, let's go up to 25%. Let me click on that, and there's our magenta overlay. I'll click generate, and we'll see what we get. All right, now this is what it looks like at 25%, and you can see it says 25% oil painting. There's my first generation. Let's try the next one. Let me click the right arrow. Here's the next one, but you can see how it's really if I shut this layer off, it's moving away from the original, right? It's becoming more abstract. And now let's look at the third one. And that one's interesting, but I can't say I'm really loving this one. I might say, this is not good. It's not going in the right direction. See the trash can right here? Click it. It dumps that away. Now, just to be fair, I tried 15 and 25%. Let's try 20% oil painting. See what we get. I'll click generate. Okay, now that's pretty cool. I really like this. Here's my second result. Not bad. Here's my third. I don't mind that either. Let me go back to the first. You know what? I think I like this one. I don't think I like this one or this one as much. So I'm going to go with the first. I'm going to click rasterize. Now I, can, I have these two. Let me turn the one on below at 15%, so I'll click the eye here and turn it on. So I'll shut this one off, so I have this one, and I have this one. So we have to determine which one do we like the best. And I'm not sure if I like the oil painting direction or not, so I may want to go into a completely new direction. And how about, let's try watercolor. So now I can double-click on oil to select oil, and I'll type in watercolor. But don't forget, you still need to click on a percentage. And I'll click on 15 for 15% 15 again. And you can see there is my overlay. And you'll notice these two layers are turned off. So it will base my painting off of the background layer, which is what I want. I'll click generate and we'll see what we get. Okay, here's our result. Now that looks really cool. That does look like a really nice watercolor to me. Let's take a look. Remember, we get three different generations. Here's our next one. Not bad. And here's our next one. Okay. I don't like all the flex back in here, but you do get that in watercolor type images, depending on how you're painting them. You know what I'm saying? But I'll tell you what, let's go through these again. I really like this first one here. Okay. So we have that one. So let's try a different percentage. Let me shut this layer off. Very important. And now let's try, let's try 20% and click generate again and see what we get. I really like this. Okay, that's my first result. Here's my second result. Meh, it's okay, don't like it too much. Here's my third result. Not a big fan, but my first result. All right, what do we like better? This one, let me turn the image on below it. I'll shut this one off. So I have this one, which I really liked, and then I have this one. And I think this is my favorite here. So on this one, again, I do like this one, but let's take a look at the other uh, options here. So I have this one, I have this one, and I have this one. No, I do like this one. So I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this layer by clicking this button right here. And now I only have the one image. And now let me go back up to this top layer. 
And again, let's go through these images again. So this one, this one, and this one. No, it's this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this. But you see how this rasterize button can save you a lot of file space. And as you can see right now, I'm only using 21.7 megabytes at this small size. So I'm not using very much file space here. But by rasterizing these layers, I've really helped myself out. Now I'll shut these all off. So here's my first oil painting and I kind of like it. Here's my second oil painting, and yeah, that's not bad, but I'm not filling the oil paintings. Here's my first watercolor at 15%, and you know what? That spattering effect in the background, I think that looks kind of nice. It looks very watercolorish, in my opinion, if that's a word. And now here was my last result, and I really, you know, it's a real toss between these two. I'm not sure which one I like the best, but let's try one more thing, and this will be a little different. I want to try to turn this flower into something like a cut paper art look. So what I'm going to do is click right here and type in cut paper art comma blue flower comma green stem with leaves. Now the reason I type that all in is because for something like cut paper art, which is different than say like an oil painting or a watercolor, you can get away with these lower percentage values. But for something like cut paper, you need to use a higher value. And when you do that, you should let Photoshop Gen Phil know what you want to produce here, okay? So it's going to look at the colors in the image and everything, but it helps to give it a nice prompt. So what I'll do is uh, click on 40 for 40%. 40 and there's my magenta overlay. And let's click generate and see what kind of result we can get. Okay, that looks pretty cool. All right, there's my first one. Here's my second generation. That looks really awesome. I really like this one. And here's my third one. Now that one's nice too, but I think I like this one the best. Now again, if I settle on this one, I think what I would do at this point would be to click on rasterize and just accept this. So now let's look at everything we've got. Let me shut this off. I'll start with my 15% oil painting. So here's my first one. I'll turn this layer on. So there's the oil painting. And I do like this. Here's the second oil painting. Not a big fan of this one, so I'll click on this layer and I'll click on the trash can and we'll get rid of that one. Let's click on the first watercolor. I love this one a lot. I think it's my favorite. And let's go to our next watercolor. I do like this too, so I may want to save that as well. And let's go to my cut paper now. Let me turn this layer on. Now, depending on what I want to do with these images, what I think I would do at this point is save this as a PSD file with all these layers in here. And it's really a small file. It's only 21.7 megabytes in size, so it's small. And then I could open it back up. And let's say I wanted to print out this image right here. I could export this image. And then after I export it, then I could send it into Topaz Photo AI and upsize it. And if I wanted to make a print out of it, I could do it. Or if I decided I wanted to print out this oil painting image, then I could do the same thing, export it, and then send it to Topaz Photo AI to upsize it or whatever. But again, I would save these all out as a PSD file. And that way I would have all these different images in this one file. And then I could go from there. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial, taking a photograph, turning it into a oil painting, a watercolor painting, a cut paper art image, using Photoshop's generative fill and the TK Gen Fill panel for Photoshop. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Don't forget to click all to receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.